So studying for the MCAT takes a, a lot of time, right? And a lot of times I'll have students come up to me and they'll say, like, hey, how do I make a study plan for the MCAT? Or can you just give me a study plan for me to prep for the MCAT? And, and that's always something like internally, I'm like, I can't do that just easily, right? Because I need some information about you, right? Because there are students out there that are just working on the MCAT and that's it, right? Like they're, they're taking the summer off, they're not working, they don't have any other commitments, they're just planning on spending 40 hours a week studying for the MCAT. On the other end of that spectrum, there are students who have full-time jobs and also maybe go to college and then also are parents, right? Like that student's gonna take a lot longer to prep for the MCAT just because they don't have as much time and so learning to balance those things can be really tricky. And so I want to make sure that there are students out there that if you feel like you have a lot of time commitments on your life, either because of family commitments or work commitments or school commitments, I want to make sure that you know you can still make it through this process. You can still master the MCAT and get into your dream medical school. But the way you need to approach this, you, it does take a little bit more thought and a little bit more planning. So let's kind of take a second and take a step back. So most students, when they apply for the MCAT, study for somewhere between 250 and 300 hours um, to take their actual test. Now, I'm gonna be honest here, most students, by the time they get to that, wish that they had spent more time or that they had more time, right? Um, I would, so looking at that, I would say a good target to aim for is not on the low end of that spectrum, that 250 to 300, is at least that 300 end, right? So you need to be thinking ahead of like, it's going to take me about 300 active hours of studying to deal with the MCAT by the time starting now to when I'm ready. And I want to also be really clear on this because I, I see this a lot where students say like, oh, I studied 10 hours over the weekend because I went to the library and then I'm like, like, were you studying the whole time? And they're like, no, well, I watched a couple of episodes of a show on Netflix, and then I took an hour long lunch break. And I'm like, okay, so your 10 hour day, you actually worked like four hours of that. And so when I say 300 hours, I don't mean just like 300 hours that you've got your computer or your book in front of you, but 300 hours of active, actual studying, practice exams, reviewing, um, however you're going through your content, reviewing, taking notes, right? Doing, doing tons of practice questions. All of those things are critical and you need to make sure that you have the time to do that. So thinking about it in that perspective, like you need 300 hours. You wanna look at your life and figure out what can you commit to this? right? Like how many hours can you commit to this path? So what I often tell students is like, okay, let's kind of take a second and, and look at just like daily life, right? Like let's say Monday through Friday, can you put in, let's say two hours a day, right? So that's two hours Monday, two hours Tuesday, same Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Note that that is 10 hours of prep, right? And that's, that's a pretty significant amount of time. And let's say on the weekend, like you can't spend the whole weekend studying, but can you squeeze in five hours over the weekend? Either you get up a little bit earlier on like Saturday and Sunday, or maybe you stay up a little bit later, or maybe you can find a break in the middle of the day, right? Um, or maybe you can do it while you're at work if you work a job, like that's something that can be really useful as well. Um, I know that I, I have seen some students that have worked in some kind of interesting jobs that they can actually do a little bit of studying while they're on the job. So if you're able to do that, right? It's two hours a day, Monday through Friday, and five hours sometime over the weekend. That's 15 hours of prep per week. So if we need 300 hours to prep for our actual test day, that means it's gonna, if we're doing 15 hours a week, we're gonna need 20 weeks, right? That's about five months of prep time. Now, five months isn't a short amount of time, but it's not that long either, right? So making sure that you can commit to this and like have a plan. And I think that is perhaps the most critical portion of this. Don't go into this saying like, I'm just gonna try to find some time to study throughout the week, but carve out time specifically. If you're anything like me, I feel like if I don't specifically block out time for this thing, the rest of my life starts to intervene and overwhelm. And so if I didn't carve out time for it, it's probably not gonna happen. So sit down, make a schedule, think about how many hours you can put in each week. And note that like, that's just one end of like one plan that a student could make. You could also have a student that says, okay, instead of two hours a day, I think I can do three Monday through Friday, right? And instead of five hours over the weekend, I think I can do 10. So all of a sudden, all of a sudden, instead of doing 15 hours a week, you're doing 25 hours a week, 
right? And so that's gonna be 12 weeks, which is only like four months to actually prep for your test day. So, um, so putting all of that together, or three months, I'm sorry, <laughs> math, right? Um, so putting all of that stuff together is, you wanna kind of like think about this, right? You want to make sure that you are making a concrete plan and thinking ahead. Most students wanna take the test sometime in May or earlier in order to be in that first wave of applications, but I really wanna encourage students, if you're not ready by May, it's better to push your test back a month and take the test in June or July and do well in July than it is to take the test in May and do poorly. You can still apply in that, that, that year, you just won't be in that first wave of applications, but it's better to have a good application than it is to have a bad application at the right time. And so that's something I really wanna encourage students to do. I've had students that have taken the test in August and gotten into medical school, and I've had students that have taken the test in May or April and I told them like, listen, you're, we're not quite ready yet, but they took it anyway because you know they, they have a plan for their life and they ended up not getting in. So you really wanna make sure that you are not just sticking to a schedule. Like it's great to make a schedule, but don't, don't say that this is the only way to do that and don't be afraid to adapt if you need to. Um, if you have any questions, about how to make a study schedule or how best to approach this sort of thing, you can always reach out to Jack Weston, um, where we have academic advisors who are there to just give you advice and help you kind of make a plan for how to approach the MCAT. And that doesn't cost anything. And so it's something that we do for free for the public just because we think that's what's best for humanity when we can kind of remove some of these barriers to becoming a, a physician. So. If you feel like your, your life is a little bit too busy to study for the MCAT, definitely reach out to an academic advisor, but also kind of take those steps, right? Plan for like at least 300 hours. Like how can I structure my life in order to make that work? You may need to talk to like significant others or maybe people at work to, to like get some, some leeway so you can start to accomplish your dreams. But if you don't ever make those steps, it's not gonna happen. And so you really wanna make sure that you're planning ahead and thinking about how to approach this.